Dan here, uh, DD Speed Shop. Uh, today, so we do a lot of work on this 55. Oh yeah, we're having some axle woes. I think I've figured out Burr's actually going to come over and give it once over. And I actually watched uh, an old episode of Roadkill, a Roadkill Garage. And Freiburg kind of did that same thing. So it makes me think that it's just, it'll be fine. But worst case, we need some bearings or whatever. We can deal with that down the road. That's a simple thing. Unfortunately, it is... The weekend and the long weekend, so nothing's happening. But the next thing we have to do, or want to do, I purchased this. So this is all bought and paid for, so this is no no sponsorship whatsoever. This is actually a lot of money. We had bought this gear vendor drive unit. And if you're new or, or don't know, a gear vendor is basically an add-on overdrive to your existing transmission. So we had originally bought this for Danny's uh, 64 Chevy 2 Gasser because uh, it was going to be kind of like a drag and drive deal. And then, no bones about it, this took so long to arrive after paying full price that uh, we just decided to scrap it. And I just changed the rear end gear so we could get on with the road trip. So if you do want any of this stuff, I would suggest buying it now and getting it sometime. Because it was uh, slow moving and it's kind of a mom and pop style organization. They have a great product by the looks of it, but you're just not, uh, it's, you're not calling up Summit and getting it the next day. So the way it works essentially is, we don't have a transmission here, but the transmission is all together. This has a, four, a Turbo 400 in it. Basically, we're gonna take off the tail uh, sh uh, housing, sorry, which is kind of what this is gonna replace. So you have our six bolts there, so that'll come off. Obviously, the shaft will be hanging out. This will go on. The shaft will then slide in to that chunk, put that in there. This is our transmission uh, mount. We'll put that on there. So this is what the back of the transmission will look like. Kind of like a, like a companion flange type deal. Then this is all just, uh, I'm just kind of guessing here, assuming the vendor will go in the back of this and hang off the back of the transmission. Essentially that'll be installed. Now, we may have some issues with floor clearancing. That is my number one kind of concern. There is some stuff you have to do, I guess, with a straight edge to the, to the gear vendor. Make sure it is spaced properly. So you have to, I guess, accomplish that. A little gasket. This just takes gear oil in it. And, uh, and that's kind of that. And then, obviously, it's going to have the same spline, a Turbo 400 32 spline deal out the back. So we'll be shortening our drive shaft. But basically, it's a real honky tonkin, fancy tail shaft uh, or tail housing that has overdrive. So there's a lot of benefits to this, and I will say, uh, John, you know, shorter ends there, drag week. He gave me the hard sell. He's a huge believer in it. These things can hold an unbelievable amount of power. Obviously, all the drag week guys are using them. So I mean, they'll hold 2,500 horsepower or whatever. I always just thought, okay, well, it's just going to have overdrive. Well, there's all sorts of other options. It actually splits gears. So this will, in fact, turn this three-speed Turbo 400 into a six-speed. So you'll have first, first over, second, second over, third, third over. And which is good for a lot of things. I mean, towing, you know, obviously is kind of what I think it's kind of meant for originally. But you can split gears, do whatever you want for passing on the highway. If you don't want to drop all the way down to, you know, second gear, you can go second over and sail. He seems to believe it's really good for off the line performance. So you're going to have first gear. You rip through first gear. And this thing has a couple different options. I think you can manually turn it on and it has some sort of a way to shift on its own, I guess, at a certain mile an hour. So he's like, you know, you could be like, Whale through first, you get almost the way through first, then it goes first over, and you're just staying in the power band for that much longer. We'll see. Uh, honestly, all I want it for is the overdrive. That's I've learned that lesson. We put that uh, Honky Tonkin uh, TKX in that uh, Black Nomad when we were going to the States last year. And man, overdrive is so nice. It's just cruising and it's easy. You know, we have mufflers on this thing, summer, and they're you know adjustable for loud and quiet. So in theory, uh, with these tires and this rear end gear, we should be able to go like 65, 70 mile an hour at like 2200 RPM, which honestly might even be a little unhappy for this motor. It may want to, we might have to go a little faster, 
but 75 mile an hour, especially in the US when we're going there, I mean, the limit is, I think, 80 or whatever it was. So this old car will go just be cruising at 2,500 RPM where it's motor's nice and happy, making lots of power, lots of oil pressure, staying cool. Everything is just going to be good. So that's the plan for today is at least get this in. Hopefully, I will say I was under it. It's, it is kind of a big unit but I'm hoping it will fit. We may have to do a little bit of smacking here and there with a hammer. But step one is pull the, the uh, tail housing off and get this, uh, this mounted on there. And I guess it just uses, what are you looking at? I have a oh. question. Yes, Danielle. Um, is it better to put this on with the, everything in the car or outside of the car? Well, yes. I determined that putting it on so the transmission in the car because I think it has to fit the floorboard now obviously if you have lots of room and you know it's gonna fit then maybe it'd be easy my concern was we we're gonna try and put the motor transmission and the gear vendor in the car all at once and then it was put get it the floor and now we have to kind of jostle the entire thing out of the way because this way what's gonna happen this will fit for sure without any modification so that'll be able to we'll go this way but that'll go on and we're just having to deal with this section. And this is still, I mean, it's gotta be a few, you know, 30 pounds or something like that. So, and looking at it, I mean, it obviously has a couple of high spots here. So we have to just dent the floor a little. The instructions are very simple. It actually does come with uh, templates, which you can cut out if you want, I guess. So you center it to your transmission. That'll give you an idea of whatever. And this one, I guess you would, you know, assemble it to something else there and give you an idea size wise so john actually said he had a bunch of these made out of aluminum i know we could borrow them but instead we're just gonna jam it together and hope for the best so i'm gonna get in there i'm gonna pull the uh, tail shaft off let it puke a bunch of transmission oil on the ground and then we can lie in transmission oil for the rest of the day fun okay i'm putting this for you for later remember all this so we got the unit in there, um, pretty simple. I can't see. We're over here, yeah, we're gonna have to crawl in there. So the tail housing kind of goes on, then you just wanna make sure you shim the little coupler so it has uh, under 20 thou. We probably had about 10 or so, just the way it worked out without any shims. Uh, so now I'm gonna see if this will go into place which is a bit of a disaster so we're gonna have to kind of hike it up and then line all these studs up through the coupler i think we'll have enough room that nothing's gonna hit um we have to stop so i could take a picture of you with it first remember i asked to do it before and he said no i want to do it after <laughs> yeah let's do that Okay. Now you can say something. <laughs> so anyways, let's see if we can... I wasn't just going to record me taking the thumbnail. <laughs> eh, maybe. Alright. Ooh. You might have to go on the other side. Oh, gosh. The other side is full of oil. Yep, that's right. <gasps> oh, this is right. Oh, it's on my head. Come on, don't do it yet. <sighs> oh, gosh. Okay. So, oh, this is awkward. Get under here. Give it a, a hoist up. Uh, oh, I ripped the gasket. No. Oh, that's so bad. That's so bad, Danielle. Son of a bitch. Why is it so thin? Well, I think it was just me wrestling it under the car. Well, I guess we'll just see what happens here. We'll have to make another one. This will actually fit. That'll be a win in itself. Oh, it's so awkward. I think. It makes it feel better. It's awkward for ah, all of us. Oh, good. So we gotta lock, line this up, maybe. 
why is this the coupler's not coupling uh, this is uh I think should be good there from according to my calculation oh there we go why is it not going in this is unbelievably heavy <sighs> okay hang on Whew. this should just be a 400 yoke oh man oh why is this not I think this is all the same okay well let's... <sighs> luckily it's just on my stomach <laughs> this comes out Okay, well that obviously works. It's just clearly. Oh, does this go up and down or anything? Oh, it goes straight. Oh, it's right again. Oh, I'll oh, just do that. Well, it doesn't hit anything. We have clearance, really? Yes, so that's mint. But we gacked the gasket. So and that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Well, yeah, a leak. Um, oh, how do we get a new gasket? Well, we can go buy some gasket material and make a new one. Okay. So that's a bit of a hassle. We can do that. So that's cool. Sounds like we don't have a choice. There is no other options, yes. Okay, well, I think that's not bad. Look how short the drive shaft's going to be. Teeny tiny. But it, it, whatever. We can go get that material. Hopefully, somewhere has that today. It is uh, Sunday of the long weekend. Yeah, but without it, we're hosed. John might have another gasket. Yeah. I could buy off of him. Let's give him a call. Let's see what he says. Should I turn the camera off? <laughs> Unless you want to see my chaos. This is how it goes sometimes. <laughs> oh, there's a camera there. Yeah. Your call has been forwarded. Oh, to oh voice embarrassing. He's got caller ID. <laughs> okay. Well, let's... Ooh, <laughs> out of that field. Did that sting? Fuck a lie. I'm used to it. <laughs> Let's see if this yoke will fit. <laughs> Are you just trying to lay under the car for as long as you can? Well, that's going to be close. Oh. Close, but clears. One finger. <laughs> that's all we need. Perfect. I don't know how this... Well, I guess I should probably look. Oh, now this is stuck. Do I have a hammer? Oh, my hair's caught. Uh, yeah. Oh, gross. Got it. This a little. Also, your hair is so close to this bucket of transmission fluid. Don't give people my secrets of how I do my hair. Okay, I'll take that off. Now, now what do I do? I don't know. I just wanted this off so it wouldn't fall. You know who probably has gasket material? It's Murr. Well, you aren't going there for dinner. Yeah, we need it right now. Oh, well, we can go there right now. Okay, let's roll. Slide out all cool. There is no such thing. Arts and crafts with DD Speed Shop. So I just ran out and got some gasket making paper, which honestly, we're probably gonna need anyways for the axles. So it almost worked out well that I bolted this. So I mean, all, all you do is Feel you. It? It's just gasket. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, whatever. Honestly, we probably could have just silicone that together and put it in whatever, but I'm kind of like, eh. At this point, we're trying to make kind of a nice car. You know what I mean? Where's my Leatherman? Okay, we'll just use a pair of scissors as a pair of pliers here. If I can. Oh, not early. So you, so you end up in the hospital, baby. What is this so tight for? Who keeps, you know, leaving stuff on the ground? You! Oh, yeah. Don't step on that. So, I mean, pretty simple. They actually sell punches for this, which would have been way nicer, but we don't have that. But we do have X-Acto knives. So we'll kind of square this out. Jam it in there. Oof. But yeah, this will be a little tedious. So we'll get this taken care of, and then we'll uh, we just drill it. Might be the way to go. Get a drill bit, see if I can speed this up. We'll be right back. Perfect. Oh, yeah. That's that DD speed job ingenuity. Is that what it is? That we've all come to expect. Expect and love? Yes. Luckily, we have this 55 Chevy trunk that also acts as a workbench. Must well, be there's really... no fenders on the car right now, so... Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm useless though, fenders. Look at that. Perfect. Sometimes I even impress myself. I know, that's pretty difficult. Really, the gear vendor should just come with a pile of uh, <laughs> spares. Spares, because they're like, oh, what idiots are putting this in here? Okay. Just a nice little ginger cut. Hopefully, this is. Good enough. This now I will say this gasket material is slightly thicker than the other stuff, which in our case is fine because oh man, that's really some good stuff. Felpro, um, that little uh, measurement it wanted was like less than twenty thou, and we were we were on the tight side, so this is fine. It may add just a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. You know me, I usually overthink things. Let's come out easy. Mate! Alright, well I'm gonna cut this out then we'll compare them right quick. Are you gonna make people watch me cut out a gasket? Well, because by the time I turn off the camera it'll be done. And then I gotta turn it back on again, like... Yes, that's what they want. No, they want more work, less talking. Alright. Turn this into a silent movie. Yeah. Oh, there we have it, a gasket. So now I will put that on and then we can, uh, maybe we'll get the tools. Now that we know it fits, all it holds it on is these tiny little lock washers or lock locking nuts. Oh, they give you that three instructions. Why is there a lock type? It has a lock nut. Oh yeah. Okay, we'll read the instruction. We'll jam this thing on. You'll see me on my back struggling. Eh? Just like the bedroom. All right. All junk out of the way. So we got the gasket on. I don't think it's any lighter than before? Oh yeah. I did have a cheeseburger while we were out, so I feel stronger. You look stronger. Awkward. 
Okay. Don't rip it this time. I think I ripped it putting it... Did you not plug that light in? It was plugged in the whole time you were out. Uh, Daniela. Daniel. Okay, that fit mint. So now... Get some of these fasteners. We just get one on there. It can't fall out. <clears throat> now, it doesn't need much torque. It says like eight... Uh, Eight foot pounds or something like that, which I interpret that as a header wrench snug. So, actually, you know what? I probably should get a, or you should get a, a 7 16 socket on a uh, quarter inch drive. If you could do that for me, because this oh, is a quarter inch drive. What does that mean? A small uh, ratchet? Well, this... Where'd the baby ratchet I gave you go? Have you checked the floor? That's probably the one that I need. You know what the people don't want to hear is attitude from a woman in the garage. <laughs> um, what? Um... So it looks like this, but smaller. And I need a sock. It looks like this, but smaller. What size? 7 16 Okay. Well, maybe it's over here. <laughs> It's not. Here's the baby. What size ends on it? A quarter? One half? One half? That's not the right one. So you want 716, right? Mm hmm. I also got one. Well, I got it first. I don't like taking off that because that's that's like the I've lost tools and I need it, but I'm freaking out. If I can find it first, it's best not to take from the the new pack. Oh, I see. There's rules here. Actually, I might need a deep socket. Is there a seven sixteenths deep there? Oh my gosh. Oh no. Can I take it from the pack? Yeah, I guess so. So, this seat is so comfortable. I can't wait for it to be in the car. Um, the vendor's in. It's all kind of torqued down. A couple of small issues I'm running into. Uh, it, I need to move the speedometer drive back to the gear vendor, which I'll leave a hole in the transmission. So, either got to get a plug or something like that. So, nothing's happening with that today. That's fine. But it's in there. We can measure for a drive shaft. We have to wire it, which I... Uh, it looks pretty simple. This thing came with this new controller, which is different than what the instructions have. So I Googled it, and it comes with this kind of wiring harness, which is a little intimidating. But then I started looking at it, and it looks rather simple. So it's got uh, black and red, so that's power and ground. And then what else do we have here? signal green and purple which is this one so this is going to go to the speed sensor which has to go in line so we'll do that it goes under the car then we have black and white do you have a black and white one well black black with white and black with red so this goes to the solenoid that turns on the gear vendor underneath so that will go underneath as well so those are all pretty simple. And then there's this one here, which is a little kind of on the complicated side, it looks like. But upon closer inspection, green with white, green, white, and yellow and white, yellow and white. These will control some dash lamps, blue and yellow. I don't have blue and yellow. Blue, oh, blue, sorry and yellow for red lamps. So these ones here control one arms, this, like when you turn it on it gets armed and the other one is whatever and I assume that's what these wires are then for. 
We'll then go to, oh yeah, blue and white, gray and white. So these go to the toggle to turn the whole system on. And then we're left with these two wires, which I do not know what is, but we actually have another wiring diagram here. Orange and gray, orange, orange, orange. I don't, oh, orange. Auto manual, oh, okay. And then gray is something else. Auto manual. So this, I guess, turns on whether it's in manual mode or automatic mode. So there you go. Pretty simple. I think I might run some wires and then we'll maybe show under it real quick. And that's kind of that. It, it doesn't look like a very complicated system whatsoever. Just got to figure out where we want to run the wires to. So I'll get after that right quick. Dan here. New Day Speed Shop. Um, so the gear vendor, we kind of fought it out yesterday. A few, few little situations. So that vendor didn't come with uh, speedo sensor kind or speedometer housing, I guess. So anyways, I pulled the one out of the transmission, which is fine. I was going to use that one and then just put a plug in the transmission because you only need one. Actually, I have it under the car right now. So the gear that came out uh, was this one, which is which actually gave a pretty accurate speedometer reading. But we have to put the speedometer in the gear vendor because that's the final direct drive. So that's going to give us the most accurate speedometer reading, right? Uh, this, for some reason, the shaft is slightly larger than the one that came out. I don't know if they'll show up on camera, but it's actually stepped right there. So the front fits, but the back doesn't. So I've never seen that before. I don't really understand that. Um... I think worst case scenario is chuck this up in the old drill lathe and just whoop, sand her down. But so we got that to encounter. Otherwise, um, like I said, I ran all the wiring. I'm unsure how I'm going to wire this thing. Just because of time, I do want it all working properly. And it, it's got all sorts of options. Like I said, the, you know, the first over, second over, and kick out overdrive and all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, you need a toggle switch or something, a switch that'll turn on the solenoid, which will put it in overdrive. All I'm really trying to accomplish right now is having overdrive on the highway. I'll show you here underneath. So we'll see exactly what we're going to do here. A lot of it depends on parts and screw around factor. Uh, so you can see the vendors in there. It actually fits quite nice. So if you are a Tri-5 guy and you want to just add um, overdrive, I assume this is going to be good. Assuming it works, but it didn't have no modifications. Actually, didn't even interfere with the... Uh, the e-brake stuff so that's amazing that's all factory so this is what i'm talking about this is the speedometer kind of housing so that's going to fit back here now so that that'll work we just have to get the gear and then up here in the transmission we have a hole now but this is essentially useless and i kind of feel like even if we just disconnected the speedometer cable it would leak so i'm going to get a frost plug or a a rubber, you know, kind of plug type thing. Otherwise, we have two wires that are going to go to solenoid to power it up. This is an extension for the speedometer cable, which actually goes into a speed sensor. So that's all kind of hooked up and ready to go. That's pretty much the only wiring there is underneath the whoop, underneath this thing. Slide my giant arms under. Oh, there's Danielle. Oh, she dropped the camera. The receiver. Otherwise, um, like I said, in here we have our uh, look at that sneaker. Huh? We have our little unit kind of plugged in, and there's only two two wires to deal with. We have to wire it to uh, 12 volts. Like I said, two of these control lights, two of these control automatic, and two of these control manual. So we need to get maybe like a three-way switch or something like that. Um, but ultimately, I think we might just kind of bypass all of this in the short term. Because in my mind, if it goes 12 volts to an LED light, or uh, yeah, 12 volts to a switch, switch to a light, and then light to the solenoid, we click that on, light will go on, it will be an overdrive. Which is how they recommend wiring it on uh, high horsepower applications such as no just like a real fancy car so this is just a street car um 
but yeah, we should be able to accomplish that and then it will have overdrive and that's really all we're trying to do. My fear is, uh, there's a lot of new stuff happening on this car. Motor, I mean the transmission is, you know, the stock or the transmission is in there but it's got a new converter and it's got the gear vendor and then the whole rear axle is different. We're going to change the wheels and tires, we're going to change the rear brakes, we're going to change the braking system up front. I'd like to drive this thing a little bit, so my fear is we're going to take too long and then cut down on the test drive miles. So the gear vendor would be nice just as long as it works and then we can mess with it down the road to have it do first over, second over and kick out. The only thing you cannot do with a gear vendor, it really is not happy I guess if you're below 15 miles an hour in, in, in overdrive, which makes sense, it's like it's just kind of hard on things, um, but reverse. If you put this thing in reverse while the gear vendor is engaged, it will screw it up. So that is the big one. So you gotta make sure you don't do that. But hopefully I can remember and uh, go from there. Anyways, that's where we're gonna leave this. Uh, we're kind of at a standstill on parts. Today is actually holiday Monday, so there's nothing I can accomplish anyways. I'm gonna start working on the rear end and get the brakes all together and building some shims just to get that all dialed. And then it's uh, measure for a drive shaft. I'd like to get this thing all together running and driving. We may end up changing the seat right away or that may be a last minute thing, because a seat. A seat I don't feel like needs test miles, it'll just work. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I feel Please. like we've given it a lot of test oh, miles. Oh man, is it a nice seat. <laughs> Feels so good. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe below and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. If you have any tips and trips, tips and tricks for the gear vendor, let me know. Uh, oh, obviously it needs oil in it, but we're on it. We'll see you on the next one.